Hi everybody, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, in this video, I want to share the revelation of the Gospel of Thomas saying 69. Um, this is actually really amazing. Today I was listening to the audio book of the Gospel of Thomas and um, when I was walking, this saying really, really struck me and I just got hit with revelation thanks to our brother Rob Skiba who yesterday on his virtual house church um, broadcast shared a video done by 119 Ministries on the specifics of Jesus on the cross and what happens to one when one is crucified. All links in the description box below. We will hear the segment that makes us relevant but so when we look at the Gospel of Thomas saying 69, which should be on your screen right now, okay, we, we could discern that and relate it to the Gospel and especially discerning the Hebrew idiom of the stomach, meaning um, one's satisfactions, one fullness in this material world. So yeah, when we look on the, at the Gospel of Thomas, just on the surface, we think, okay, that has a deep spiritual meaning that we can relate to the Gospel. And all that kind of stuff. But um, I don't think anybody realizes this actually refers to what Yeshua endured on the cross. And how it relates to Bible prophecy even today. It's really amazing. So um, I'm just going to leave you with this excerpt. And meditate on this saying. This lost saying of Jesus. But what of his abdomen? For it says... Numbers chapter 5, verse 21. May Yahweh cause your people to curse and denounce you when he causes your thigh to waste away and your abdomen to swell. We all have taken big breaths to fill our lungs with air. It's a big, strong breath that we take in. A strong breath is when your chest is forced out, but what about a relaxed breath? Does your chest rise or does your stomach? Your stomach rises, of course. The lungs can only expand so much because of your ribs. And just as electricity travels best in the paths of least resistance, likewise, our lungs expand towards the least resistance given. In a relaxed state, that expansion is downward. Normally, our abdomen rises just as much, if not more, in relaxed breathing. However, this is not what caused his abdomen to swell on the cross. Stay with me here. Let's think about this for a minute. Our Savior had been up all night in a mock trial. Plus, we know that he was stressed, as it is recorded that his sweat was mixed with blood the night of praying in the garden. Luke chapter 22, verse 44. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became as if it were great drops of blood falling down upon the ground. It's not like he entered this day with a good night's sleep on a nice mattress. So he's been up for over 24 hours. After being smacked around from the Pharisees and having his beard pulled, he gets beat up by the Roman soldiers, then presented to his people with a crown of thorns. Then he gets flogged to the point of hardly having any human recognition according to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 14. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man and his form marred beyond human likeness. Then he has to carry his own cross. He falls under its weight, unable to go any further. To say he has any strength to breathe strong while on the cross is pushing it. His body is spent. It's exhausted. Every breath taken is in weakness, not strength. But he wasn't only unable to breathe strong. Most all who have studied the science behind the crucifixion of Yeshua agree that his lungs, in fact, filled with fluids while he hung on the cross at the hands of the Romans. The sheer weight of the fluid filling the lungs would be enough to pull down on the lungs and push the abdomen out, not much different from filling a water balloon. No matter how small, the more you fill it, not only does it get bigger, but it also stretches and pulls down from the weight. Plus, 
What little breathing he was doing that his lungs could take in, that is, was only pushing the stomach farther down. This, in turn, forced our Savior's abdomen to swell out, just as it is written in the curse, as given in Numbers chapter 5, to the unfaithful wife. Plus, verse 27 adds an element of bitter suffering. Numbers chapter 5, verse 27. If she has defiled herself and been unfaithful to her husband, then when she is made to drink the water that brings a curse, it will go into her and cause bitter suffering. Her abdomen will swell and her thigh waste away, and she will become accursed among her people. I think there can be no argument that Yeshua endured bitter suffering on the cross. Thus, he took the punishment of the unfaithful spouse. He was brought before the Sanhedrin just like the woman was to be brought before the priest. No witnesses for proof with Pilate, and Pilate found no fault, and he declared it. Luke chapter 23, verse 4, Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. Thus, the need for him to drink the cup to prove the guilt. Compare again verse 23 and 24. Numbers chapter 5, verse 23 and 24. The priest is to write these curses on a scroll and then wash them off into the bitter water. He shall have the woman drink the bitter water that brings a curse, and this water will enter her and cause bitter suffering. He took the curse as mentioned in verse 23, and he nailed it to the cross. He took the curse of Numbers chapter 5 that applied to the unfaithful wife, and he nailed it to the cross through his death, just as mentioned in Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, completely enabling his divorced wife to be wiped clean of her guilt and to be remarried at the same time. She can now be justified, justified, declared or made righteous in the sight of God. Justified, just if I'd never done it. Romans chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. He takes our sin and removes it through his death. 